Hello, I'm Dr. Sean McCorkle at Summer Creek Animal Clinic, and today I wanted to talk to you about the ins and outs of dog nutrition. And so my assistant, Lauren, is going to help by asking some questions, and I hope this helps you learn more about dog nutrition. Dr. McCorkle, what is the right food to feed my dog? Yeah, that's a big question. I, I think the the, the things that have to be considered are your dog's age, um, any underlying medical conditions or uh, chronic issues that they have, um, as well as their lifestyle. And so those things will help to assess um, what nutrition is appropriate for your pet. Um, if your pet is completely healthy, no medical issues, healthy weight, and all of those things are good. I think a good general over-the-counter um, diet is usually sufficient, but um, as most people know nowadays, there are many, many dog foods coming onto the market literally every week, and so uh, sifting through that can be a real challenge. Um, I think finding a balanced nutrition uh, can be done. It's just challenging. And so the, the one standard to look for, and most dog foods should have this, but if your food does not have the AFCO stamp on it, that's A-A-F-C-O, um, that is not a regulatory body, but they do basically publish um, information on what meets, what is a baseline for nutrition needs in the dog and a variety of species, but particularly for the dog, based on their, their age, um, whether they're a puppy, an adult, or a senior pet. And so having that AFCO label on the food at least means that they have met baseline requirements. Awesome. What are the life stages of feeding my dog? Yeah, I think the simplest way to break that down is going to be puppy, adult, and senior. So puppies are going to be typically anywhere from, from when they're weaned, um, once they're on actual dog food, up until roughly around a year old. And that's because that's when the rapid growth is happening. And so those, those dogs need particular nutrition to support that rapid growth. And then an adult dog is roughly around a year old, um, some variation depending on the size of the dog, but generally around a year. And then up until roughly seven, eight years old, sometimes a little younger on the really large dogs. Um, so really anywhere from probably six to eight years old. And then at that point, they're transitioned into the senior category. And that is six to eight years old and older. Um, and then you can even get a little bit more specific and get into the geriatric category, which is once they've surpassed their average lifespan. So generally roughly around 13 years old. And again, that varies based on the breed, but after that they're in the geriatric category. Okay. And how do I wean my puppy and get them onto regular food? Yeah. So the, the, when we're talking about puppy food, like I said, a minute ago, we're talking about once they've been transitioned. So that weaning process typically starts roughly around three to four weeks old. Um, and is it, the goal is to usually have them on puppy food by about six weeks, uh, at, at least by six weeks. And so that process is one of just slowly introducing dog food. And that's usually some, some sort of gruel or wet food, um, wet puppy food, where you're, you're adding in small amounts of that. And then every few days, you're gradually increasing the amount of that really soft, wet food. Um, and decreasing the amount of, of milk that they're getting. And that process is usually about a two to three week process. Uh, and you can do that with dry food. You just have to grind it up and, and add water to, to make it more of a soft consistency. Perfect. Should I feed my dog on a schedule? And how do I know if my dog's nutrition is suffering? Yeah, let's answer the first question. How, how do, what, what's, should we feed them on a schedule? And I am a big proponent for feeding dogs meals versus free feeding. And so I'll walk you through some of the reasoning for that. Um, if you have one dog in your home and no other pets, and there's no intent on getting another pet in the future, 
that's that's the one circumstance where I could see free feeding working potentially. Um, the thing is, you still need to be able to control the amount of calories they're eating each day, um, and not just allow them to eat as much as they want because many dogs will will overeat. The problem is most most households in America have more than one dog. And so as soon as you get more than one dog, it becomes very challenging to control who's eating what and, and how much they're eating if the food is just left out throughout the day. So that's why I recommend meal feeding. Generally with dogs, twice a day is the most practical thing. I definitely like that more than once a day because having multiple meals um, keeps the metabolism going. Just like in people, you wanna eat smaller, more frequent meals versus one large meal. So generally twice a day accomplishes that and is, and is still practical for most people. Now, the other thing is you're able to really tightly control how much each pet is eating when you do that. So when I say meal feeding, I mean putting the food down a measured amount and separating the pets ideally. And then that way when they're done eating, if they didn't finish at all, or you know if they tend to, to wander and try to find the other dog's food, you can pick up the bowls and, and again, have tight control over who's eating what. Um, so that's, that's how I recommend doing the scheduling. And then how do you know if your dog's nutrition is suffering? Um, there's a lot, lots of different things that can be considered there, but, but you know, either being um, overweight or too skinny, um, having a poor coat quality, um, having intermittent or chronic loose or soft stools, occasional vomiting, um, more gas than, than they should, although sometimes that's hard to tell. Um, those are some general things that you can be looking for. Now, not all of that is always tied to nutrition, but oftentimes there's a nutritional component that can play a role there. That makes sense. How do I know if I'm feeding my dog too much? Yeah, I love that question because I, I, I do think that generally speaking, the, the pet population tends to be um, overweight. And, and what I've actually noticed over the years is that it's become the norm for dogs to be overweight to where people, when they look at a dog, they think that the dog is a healthy weight because that's what they're used to seeing. When in reality, most of the time that dog is overweight. So what I like to tell clients um, is I want them to be able to gauge their pet's weight subjectively so they can have an idea of, of whether they're feeding the appropriate amount in between appointments so they can make adjust in, adjustments and titrate as needed. So the thing that I think is most helpful for dogs is whether you can feel the ribs easily. So the ribs are on the, the front half of the body in the dog, right? And so you want to be able to gently rub your fingers along the ribs without having to push through a bunch of fat. You should be able to just gently rub your fingers along the ribs and feel them easily. If you can't feel them and you have to press through the extra padding, then that means your dog has extra weight around the ribs. And that's where they tend to put a lot of their extra weight. Um, the other thing is you want your dog to have a nice waist tuck. So as you go from the, the chest back to the abdomen, it should tuck up, both looking from the side as well as if you're looking down, you should see some distinction between the chest and the abdomen. Now that varies a little bit between breeds. Um, that's why I think that the feeling, getting used to feeling the ribs is really helpful. Okay, next question. What are the essential nutrients my dog needs? Yeah, so the basic nutrients are proteins, fats, carbohydrates, and then vitamins and minerals. Um, those are the things that really are what make up the nutrition that's required for dogs. And that's really where I think a lot of the, the foods differ is the balance of those various nutrients. But those are the main ones. And how will a veterinarian be able to assess if my dog is getting proper nutrition? Yeah, so um, all the things that I mentioned earlier about what to look for are, this, are similar to what we're going to be looking for when we evaluate a pet. So is the pet too skinny? Is the pet too heavy? Um, how's the coat quality? What's the GI system like? Is there vomiting, diarrhea? Um, all of those things are part of the assessment. 
Um, the other uh, big thing that we, we can look at to get better input is uh, laboratory uh, values. So blood work, urine assessments, um, those things can be really helpful. So I'll give you one example, because um, this is commonly seen in veterinary medicine nowadays, and that's diets that are way too high in protein. When a diet is really high in protein, it puts more stress on the kidneys, particularly, as well as the liver, but the kidneys in this circumstance, when that happens, the kidneys have to process, have to filter all that extra protein out. And that can actually um, be hard on the kidneys. And in the blood, there's a value uh, called the BUN that is sometimes elevated in the blood because the kidneys are not able to appropriately excrete that from the blood. And high protein is not the only thing that can cause that, but it is one of the big factors. And I see that more and more um, because so many dogs are on high, high protein diets now. Interesting. Okay. There are so many brands of dog food. How will I know the best one for my dog? Yeah, this is tough. I, I hate answering this question because um, it's such a difficult one. So I think laying some foundation here, I, I think one big thing that I would encourage pet owners to think about is not as much the ingredients. The ingredients are important, but it's the nutrients that the ingredients provide. And I think that's been the huge divide lately in the last decade where more and more marketing, more and more online stuff is really focusing on the ingredients to the detriment of the nutrients that are being provided. And just again, one example, this is just one example of that, and that's the protein. So you can have a diet that has the absolute best protein source, organic, you know, really high quality. Um, and it's primarily, you know, a, some sort of really high quality protein with maybe a few other ingredients. Because again, limited ingredients is another really big fad right now as well. And there's not in, anything necessarily inherently wrong with that. But because that's the focus, then we don't realize that that diet has 40% protein which is an enormous amount and way too much for a dog to have to process every single day. And that can be hard on their liver and kidneys. So I think having that foundation of saying, let's focus on the nutrients being provided and that being the priority, um, not saying that ingredients don't matter, but they're not the priority. What the, it's what they provide nutrient wise. So with that said, um, I do think that there are some companies that, have that as their focus. And these are the companies that are actually doing most of the pet nutrition research. And so that also, um, I think, plays a big role as far as what I'm comfortable recommending, because these are the companies that are investing in the research on the pet nutrition side. And these are by, by no means the only good pet foods out there, but the ones I have the most confidence in uh, because of the reasons I just mentioned are Hill's, um, Purina, particularly with their pro plan line, um, and then Royal Canin. Those are the big three companies that do most of the research that focus most of their efforts on good nutrition, um, as the priority. And therefore those are the ones that I tend to lean most heavily on. Sounds good. And last question, when would my dog need a prescription diet? Yeah. So, um, I'm a big fan of prescription nutrition um, because there's so many situations nowadays that we have great nutrition that can help to manage that condition. So when we talk about prescription nutrition, another word for that would be therapeutic nutrition. And that's a diet that has been specifically formulated to either treat or manage a specific condition. So that means that it's actually a prescription diet. It has been, it's gone through testing and studies that prove that it has a benefit to that end. It has an actual claim to say it causes your dog to lose weight or, or whatever it may be. And uh, in 2021, we've got quite a few good therapeutic diets that can help manage disease. And I think if we can manage conditions through nutrition, um, as much as possible. It's the same thing on the human side. I think if we can do that, that's something that we should focus on. So I'll give you a couple of examples on, on what this looks like in day-to-day -day practice for me. 
Um, for example, joint disease. We see a ton of joint disease, arthritis, torn ACLs, hip dysplasia, all kinds of things in dogs. And that those dogs usually are suffering from some level of chronic pain. And we want to focus in on managing their pain and helping with their quality of life. And one of the really helpful ways to do that is providing really good joint support through the diet. And as one example, the prescription diets have high levels of omega-3 fatty acids. And the research out there shows that that is the best way to, to get the omega-3s into the dog because they get the best absorption and therefore provides the best anti-inflammatory properties in the joints for those dogs that have uh, arthritis and other joint diseases. So I'm, I'm quick to go to the prescription joint diets for added support, and usually in addition to other things. Um, and then the weight management side of things, we've got um, really great diets now that actually can focus on both the joint management as well as uh, weight management, helping to increases, increase dogs' metabolic rate to help them shave off the weight more naturally. Um, so those are just two of many, many examples where we can actually manage and treat disease through the nutrition and so I would talk to your veterinarian about what options are available if your dog has a medical condition, because there's a decent chance that it can at least be helped um, through nutritional therapy. Thanks, Dr. McCorkle. And if someone does have questions regarding dog nutrition, how should they get in touch with you guys? Yeah, if you have any other questions, we would be happy to talk with you more about these things. Um, you can reach us at 817 523 1139 at Summer Creek Animal Clinic. And we also have a lot more information on our website at summercreekvet.com. Thank you.